I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we are going to take an excellent question, unique in itself. The question here is, sketch the graph of absolute value of y equals to 2 times absolute value of x plus 1 minus 3. A brilliant question. Let me thank all the viewers and subscribers for watching my videos and posting excellent suggestions. Special thanks to Mr. Ivan who has shared this question with me. I loved it. I hope you will understand and appreciate the solution, rather the graph of this function, at the end of this video. And enjoy the video as much as I enjoyed the question. You may pause the video, answer, and then look into my suggestions. Well, I am going to approach it in a very different way. First, I'll provide you a solution, which I thought is correct, but later figured out that it was incorrect. So, the first solution, which I'm going to provide, is a wrong solution. So, please, do not just interruptly quit the video, watch it till end, so that you can enjoy the solution wholly. Okay, so let's uh, look at this question and try to understand it first. We have absolute value of y equals to 2 times absolute value of x plus 1 minus 3. So, we've been doing a lot of graphing for absolute functions. That doesn't seem to be very difficult. Yes, absolute value of y on the left hand side. We need to think about it for sure. But let's try to sketch the right hand side, which is 2 times absolute value of x plus 3 minus x plus 1 minus 3. So we have a vertex of this particular graph at minus 1 and minus 3. Correct? So what I did was that I sketched from the vertex concept. So let's look into the right hand side. So we have 2 times absolute value of x plus 1 minus 3. So this absolute value function has a vertex or the corner you can say at minus 1 minus 3. So what I mean to say is if I put x as equal to minus 1, I'll get minus 3 as my value. Right? So, so this point comes at minus 1, minus 3 on the graph. Now to make the graph, I should take a point on either side. So let me make a table. That will help. So, so, when I put x value as minus 1, I get 2 times absolute value of minus 1 plus 1 minus 3, which is, as I said, minus 3. Correct. Now, if I take a value on the right hand side and one on the left hand side, we know we have a symmetry. But let me just uh, take one. So this is the right hand side. And if I take this value, let us say zero. Easy. So two times zero plus one minus three will give me two minus three, which is minus one. Correct? So, so I get this value at zero minus one. 
Similarly, you could also try the value at minus 2. And for sure, you're going to get the value here, right? So we get these values. You can actually move on and get other values also. You can see that this is kind of the gradient, right? 2. So every time you move, you go up by 2 units, right? That's another easy way of sketching these kinds of graphs. Absolute value function, right? So you can substitute some values and get these answers, right? So to so get these points. So definitely, we have a function here which is kind of like this. And that is, when you substitute these values, we are getting this kind of a graph. So if I connect it, we get this uh, familiar V-shaped graph, right? Now, since we are interested in the absolute value, right? We want the absolute value of y. What will I do? I will flip the negative portion to positive, right? So when I do so, so let me do it. So this uh, point, which was at minus 1, minus 3, will now appear here, correct? Okay? And therefore, my graph will be all the portions which are negative will be flipped. So that will be my graph. So, I thought this is the right solution for absolute value of y. Do you see that? Correct? So, that is what I thought will be the solution. Let me just make it dark. However, it is incorrect. Since we are looking at absolute value of y on the left hand side, right? Just as when you started with the absolute value of x, sketching the graph of absolute value functions, you treated that as a piecewise function, correct? So, therefore, we now know that this is kind of incorrect. Something is missing here. And what is that missing link? Let's look into that now. Perfect. So, this is incorrect solution, all right? So, now, let's look into the correct solution. To approach, what we need to do is redefine the absolute value function itself first, right? So, this is equal to what? Well, this is equal to 2 times absolute value of x plus 1 minus 3 when the y value is greater than or equal to 0. Then this absolute value will be same because both are positive, correct? However, if we get a negative result, that is to say, if y is less than 0, then it is negative of all this, right? Then it is negative of x plus 1 and negative of minus 3 becomes positive 3 y is less than 0. You get the idea. So, when you are given a question like this with absolute value, you have to always redefine the question as piecewise function. Now, when you redefine it, then you should sketch and combine both the pieces together to get the complete graph. You get an idea. Perfect. So, that is going to be our approach to get the right graph, right? So, so I hope you understand the, the approach now. So, so, we'll sketch both the parts. Left part, we already sketched, right? So, let's redo it. So, we are now saying that we have two parts. So, left part, which is absolute value of y is equal to same as the function given to us, which is 2 times absolute value of x plus 1 minus 3, when 
y is greater than or equal to 0. Right? So, this is our uh, right hand side of the, this is one piece, right? So, this is one piece. So, I should say one part. Correct. So, for the benefit of viewers, what I'm going to do here is make a table this time and then sketch. It's easy to understand this way, right? Okay. So, so best values to take are beginning from x equals to minus 1, right? So, we'll take x values as minus 1 and we can go up and down two units, for example. So, x minus 1 and then we can go to uh, left side, which is minus 2, minus 3 and on the right side, it is 0, 1, correct? So, when you substitute minus 1 here, then what do you get? So, absolute value of x plus 1 minus 3. So, we get for minus 1, 2 times minus 1 plus 1, absolute value minus 3, that being 0, we get minus 3, right? And if I substitute 0, then 2 times absolute value of 0 plus 1 minus 3, which is 2 minus 3, which is minus 1. And for 1, I get 1 plus 1, absolute value, minus 3. And that gives me the value as 2 times 2, 4, 4 minus 3 is 1. Now, the other values you can calculate, which will be symmetrical, no problem. Let's rewrite them. So, we get 2 times, if I substitute minus 2, minus 2 plus 1, minus 3, and that is minus 1 turns to plus 1, 2 minus 3, again, is minus 1. And then, if I substitute minus 3 in it, then we get plus 1. Correct? So, plotting these points, we have, I prefer to always begin with the vertex which in this case definitely is at minus 1, minus 3. So, some of you must have plotted using the concept. So, vertex is here and since the gradient is 2, we'll go up by 2 each time and plot our points, correct? And you can check, this really matches with the calculated values, right? So, once again, I'm emphasizing on ease of plotting with concept rather than with table and clearly since we are looking for the absolute value of y we'll only consider the positive parts right so so we have this connection however we have to take the absolute value so we are going to reflect this particular part on the other side which is in this case, at 1, I should get 3, right? So, there we go and we'll combine and there we have our graph. The x-intercepts are at plus half, as you can see, and at 2.5 minus. You see, that becomes one part of it. So, we are considering y greater than or equal to 0. Now, let's look into the other part, which is this part. So, let me give it a different color. So, now we look into, so earlier we looked into the first part, shown in green. Now, we are going to sketch the second part, shown in orange. Correct. So, now we will do absolute value of y equals to minus of this, right, x plus 1 absolute value plus 3. So, minus and we are taking y when it is less than 0. Perfect. Now, in this case, if I make the same table, then let's do it. What values do we get for x? 
taking x again as minus 1, 0 and 1 on the positive side, minus 2, minus 3. So, plugging the values, minus 2, minus 1, plus 1. Do you see a change here, right? So, that is equal to plus 3, plus 3 this time. Do you see that? Plus 3. Because we have taking the other leg of it, right? If I substitute 0 here, so we get minus 2, 0 plus 1, plus 3, which is minus 2 plus 3, which is plus 1. And then if I substitute 1 here, I get 1 plus 1, plus 3, which is 2 times 2, minus 2, minus 4, I get minus 1, correct? Okay? Let's calculate for the other one also for the benefit of some viewers. We have this as plus 1 inside. So minus 2 plus 3 gives me 1. And with minus 3, you will get a value which is minus 1. Okay? So beginning with the points which are, I prefer go with the vertex. At minus 1, we have plus 3 this time, right? 1, 2, 3. And then the graph comes down. If I move one unit to the right, it goes two units down, right? So that is how it comes down, right? Similarly, on the other side, absolute value functions are symmetric about the vertex or the coordinate. And that helps us to create this particular graph. And look here. We are again looking for the absolute value where y is less than 0. Do you get the idea? Where y is less than 0. So when y is less than 0, we are only considering which part of it? We are only considering the part which is this side. We are not considering the other part. Do you get the idea? So do you see the approach? Let's go back to our previous diagram. So in the previous diagram, the center portion which we considered was not correct because the condition was to use only those y values which are greater than 0. Now, greater than 0 y values what? Only these. Do you see that? Only these, not that the other one. So, posting it like reflection is incorrect. So, you see that was a second mistake. Perfect. So, in this particular graph, you could actually do a couple of mistakes and land up with wrong solutions. So, ultimately, I think you have understood the solution, right? So, when you are defining as two pieces, let's now combine the two solutions. We are defining absolute value of y as equal to these two functions, 2 times absolute value of x plus 1 minus 3 when y is greater than or equal to 0 and negative of this, right? negative of all this. Let me rewrite this time like that, x plus 1 minus 3 inside. When you open the bracket, you get what we started with. You get the idea. So, in the first graph which we sketched, where our points were minus 1, minus 3, and then going up, we had, you know, this graph. Okay, easy to sketch. You understand with this exercise how easy it is to sketch the absolute value functions, and we have sketched in green. So, this negative part will not be considered. Only the positive part will be considered. Do you get the idea? That is what we mean when we say that we'll take this side where y is greater than e. So, y is greater than or equal to 0 only along this path, not in between. So, reflecting it was a mistake. You get the idea. 
And now, when we look into this second time, second leg, negative parts, the graph was like what? The graph was like a reflection of this, right? So, so I'm just sketching this with the values which we calculated earlier and the concept, right? You see this. Now, in the second half, we are only looking at the part which is negative, less than. So, therefore, this will be only this portion, not the inside portion. You get the idea. So that is going to be the final sketch for absolute value of y. You get the idea. That is going to be our solution. Perfect. So now I'd like you to pause the video, redo the question after defining this. And what should you get? Well, you should get this particular graph. So that is the graph for absolute value of y equals to 2 times absolute value of x plus 1 minus 3. You get an idea, right? This is how you should be sketching. So I hope all the steps are absolutely clear. You need to redefine the function as two pieces, just as you do with normal absolute functions. The difference here is that these two pieces are also absolute value functions and that creates the complication. I hope you understand our strategy and also the concept to solve and look into these problems in the right perspective. Feel free to provide your suggestions and comments. Thanks for your time and all the best.